I'm Major General Munir Suman. I am President of the Bangladesh Institute of Peace and Security Studies. It is an independent think tank that works primarily on strategic and security issues, focusing on Bangladesh, South Asia and beyond. One of our primary areas of work lately has been to look at analyze on the issues of non-traditional security, and in that we have been working on the non-traditional security threats facing South Asia. South Asia is a very large area of humanity where almost one-third of the global population lives. It comprises of eight nations in South Asia, starting from Afghanistan, Pakistan, to India, to Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Nepal, Bhutan, and the Maldives. So it's a very large geographic area and also has, has a very large demographic size. South Asia is also today extremely strategically significant, not only for its geostrategic locations, but also for the reason that it has a large demographic size, it has one of the fastest growing power and economy in the world, India, it is home to two of the nuclear club members, India and Pakistan, and it is in close proximity to another rising power and a nuclear power, China. Therefore, whatever happens to South Asia has significant impact on the global system and in the international security system. The reason that I am touching on non-traditional security today is because besides the share of traditional security issues facing South Asia, it has a fair amount of challenges of the non-traditional security domain. The issues that confront South Asia today on the non-traditional security domain are food security, water security, energy security, property, a host of transnational threats like drug trafficking, money laundering, small arms proliferation. It has also a large problem of human trafficking. It has issues of migration, both internal and external. And to add to everything, now we have the great challenge of climate change. Food has become a major issue of non-traditional threat to South Asia because of the large demographic size and the poverty level that prevails in most of the countries in the region and the dwindling production capacity of its agricultural land. Food has become a source of scarcity in many of the countries in various seasons. In the recent years, we've also had the problem of rise of food prices affecting the food security situation of the people in many countries. Therefore, the issues of food security, low productivity, weak distribution system, and an access to food due to pricing system has become reasons of concern, and people are extremely insecure in terms of the food provided to them in all seasons. Water perhaps will become South Asia's uh, primary non-traditional security issue, and it has already become in that scale. Many of the countries in the region face great shortages of water. People don't have access to adequate and clean and safe drinking water. There is lack of water for agricultural irrigation. There is also lack of water for navigation and other water-related livelihood. We now have a problem when we have droughts in the dry season or the lean seasons, and we have flooding in the wet seasons or in the monsoon. Therefore, regions and the countries in the region, particularly the Himalayan Basin area, are facing great uncertainties in relation to water and in relation to water-related disasters. It is also worth mentioning here that the Himalayan glaciers are melting at a much rapid pace than it has ever done before. Therefore, we are expected to see more flooding in the coming years and when the ice melts beyond the limit, that will see prolonged droughts in many of the countries. South Asia today is also facing the challenge of energy security. It's a, a region that has rapidly growing economies and consuming ever more energy than it has done ever before. It also is not sufficient in its internal resources in terms of energy. Therefore, much of the energy in terms of fossil fuel and other forms of energy has to be imported extra regionally. And the consumption level of energy is going so high that energy is becoming extremely more scarce and at the rate of development and the pace of progress has to be maintained and sustained, 
then South Asia will soon become one of the most energy hungry regions of the world and also an energy scarce region. Together with everything, a very large demographic size of population in many, most of the countries in the region. There is also high rate of prevailing poverty in the region. In most countries, the rate of people living under the poverty line is anything between 30 to 40 percent. There are hardly any countries in the region that has anything, a figure which is less than 30 percent people living below the poverty line. In some countries like Pakistan and India, the rate of people percentage of people living below the poverty line goes even higher than 50% in many cases. Therefore, a large portion of the humanities, poor people, live in South Asia. A large percentage of that poor people in South Asia are also can, are in the category of what can be termed as hardcore poor. Therefore, they don't have the basic amenities of life. They don't have the capacity to sustain a basic standard of living and therefore Many of the people die premature death or their children are stunted. So poverty has prevailing and progressive invasion into most aspects of their lives. South Asia has a number of transnational threats. The notable amongst them would be the drug trafficking in the region. Then would be the money laundering or illegal money that goes around the region and also a fair amount and a high rate of small ops uh, proliferation in the region. South Asia is close to both the Golden Triangle and the Golden Crescent area of the drug production basis. Therefore, it has now become a trafficking route for much of the drugs that transcend South Asia going to various parts of the world. And along with drugs comes illegal money and money laundering has again become a problem. It has also seen a fairly high proportion of small proliferation in the region, resulting in a lot of criminal activities and transnational criminal gangs operate in most of the countries. We therefore have also come up to a point where there is a high rate of human trafficking in the region. Humans are being trafficked out from South Asia to various parts of the world, to the Middle East, to Europe, to North America, for a number of reasons, for uh, sex trade, for sex slave purposes, for domestic health, even for the reasons of small children being trafficked to the Middle East as camel jockeys. Therefore, Human trafficking has become another major human security challenge in the region. We also have issues of migration, both IDPs within the states and also regional migration for people moving from one country to another, either as economic migrants or for other purposes. And in most cases, they end up in various unhealthy conditions and is also resented by the receiving states in the region. But perhaps the most compounding problem of all, by which I would like to end my uh, discussion here is the threat of climate change that loops very heavily over South Asia. South Asia is one of the frontline states or regions in the face of the challenge of climate change and most countries in the regions including Bangladesh, India, Pakistan and the Maldives have grave challenges in the face of climate change. For example, the Maldives which is one of the most beautiful part of the world will perhaps completely vanish from the face of the earth if sea level rises. Again, if sea level rises by one meter, then 20% of Bangladesh's landmass will be lost to the sea, creating the largest human migration or human refugees in human history. It is estimated that everything between 40 to 45 million people in the country in Bangladesh will become climate refugees and will migrate to other countries in the region and beyond the region. Therefore, climate change is becoming one of the greatest threats to the countries in South Asia. Overall, the human security situation and the threat of non-traditional security challenges in South Asia is extremely high and grave, and many countries are not quite up to meeting the challenges, but we have to put our attention together so that we address the issues before they become critical and they go on beyond our management capacity. We have to do that as a country, as a, as a region, and as members of the international community so that we address the issues of human security and non-traditional security challenges in South Asia. Thank you.